Welcome back to Rocket City. Here we are in the off season of season two, looking ahead at season three. You gotta be happy with the results of last year, but we want even more. We wanna be on the up and up, and I think this year we can conquer the Sun Belt. And if we do that, I think we can upgrade ourselves to a new conference, but more on that in the future. Here we are at the coaching carousel stage. We had the number one offense in college football last year. So Anthony Burks, first year offensive coordinator. I really don't know if he's gonna go for a new job or if he's gonna stay here at Rocket City. Oh, and Anthony Burks, he did leave us. He's actually staying in the Sun Belt. He's going to be the new head coach of Texas State. I mean, you had a feeling it might have happened. We didn't know where he was going to go, but such a talented young mind. Last year, we only had like a C rated offense or something, and he got us to the number one most productive offense in college football. If we didn't have injuries, we could have just outright won the Sun Belt. Excited to see what he can do as a head coach. It's going to be really fun to follow his career. Oh, crap. We got ourselves a major downgrade in terms of perceived talent. Gerard Parker, former offensive coordinator of West Virginia, they went two and nine. He was fired. So he's trying to pick his career back together. He's currently at a D minus, but he's bringing in a spread playbook. So I'm going to switch our playbook to a spread just because I think it's fun. We don't have Anthony Burks anymore. So we're going to see what this new guy can do. So Texas State did beat us last year. Anthony Burks, new head coach over there. They went 10 and three. So I mean, that's pretty much a big hire for them. B plus prestige. He's really a guy that I think could keep on rising. We'll see what Anthony Burks does. This is always a sad stage. Players leaving. And to be honest, we don't have a ton of players leaving this year. A lot of it is just turnover from year one. But I think Danny Dorito was probably the most valuable one out of this group. He does not have big numbers. 24 catches, 369 yards, three touchdowns. Former quarterback. <laughs> Let's be really. He was a pretty poopy quarterback. Not even a single passing touchdown. Poor guy. We really tried, but he was a good like chain mover this year. Think like a Hunter Renfro or a Slade Bolden, you know what I mean? Danny Dorito, he does not have any hope at the next level, but hey, there's a lot of random leagues out there, fan-controlled football. You also got the USFL, the XFL, Canadian Football League, Japanese Football League. Somebody will take him in, but probably not the NFL level. Or maybe we'll go into marketing, work at Doritos. We actually do have a transfer. Joel Vogel, I had him red-shirted. We're not really gonna use him. No hard feelings here. He just chose the wrong school, to be honest. Roy Kent, he's here, he's there, he's every F and where. Yeah, Roy Kent, I, I thought he was going to do more, but he was a, a solid contributor. Nothing really super noteworthy. Legendary name, but that's about it. Talking about legendary names, Eaton Beaver. Going to miss saying that one. At least the, the comments will miss me saying that one. It was just a minor role player. Again, not very statistically noteworthy, but you got to love the man. And Blake Coffin, man. <laughs> He did not get over 100 rushing yards in a single season, like let alone not a game, an entire season. <laughs> and Alex Sorensen, he actually had a pretty good story. I mean, I started off trying to roast him, be like, put all the blame on this guy, but he turned into one of the, I mean, we had the worst defense in the country, but I think Alex Sorensen was one of the few bright spots if there were any on that team. So you earn respect in my book, Sorensen. Wish the best for you at Enterprise Rent-A-Car or whatever you do in the future. And Owen Boutte, our pass catching running back, Got a couple touchdowns here. Oh, nuts and Kirkin. Almost forgot you were a senior, mate. You were honestly one of the best players year one. Besides, I mean, Awusu definitely took that claim. He was like my number two target. Not a lot of touchdown production, but a chain mover. And yes, his name is a uh, tip of the hat, if you will, to uh, former Auburn tight end Philip Lutzenkirchen. May he rest in peace. Shocker, we have nobody who was drafted this season. Can't believe no one saw that one coming. Matt Corral going in the first round in this one. Was it the third round? in the real life. And there it is. I've never had this scenario before, but our recruiting was so strong throughout the year that I don't have anyone to target here in the off season. We got 13,000 points and we don't have anyone to spend it on. I wonder if I can like last second throw somebody on the board. Oh, we found a random gym on the last day. He is a Juco transfer. Um, uh, let's offer him a I mean, like, they're not even remotely on the board. We did just have a receiver transfer, and we might need some guy to fill in that position. I think Terrence Lindsay might be the, the target here. I mean, you're talking a wild throw in the dark. I've never seen anyone try this before, so why not? Let's see if it works out. Ryan Lamb committed to Texas A&M, and we got no word on the other players. Terrence Lindsay does not sign anywhere, and Ryan Lamb, yeah, not even a shot. But now it's my favorite stage. We got the position changes. Our quarterback 
quarterback room, we added Wayne Fontino. I believe is how you say his name. He's going to be hopefully the quarterback of the future here. I want him to develop a little bit. Uh, he does have tremendous throw power and very good accuracy at the moment, but I don't want to throw him into the fire just yet. And that's of course because we got the legendary Jeff Eaton who hopefully can stay healthy this year. And then third string will be Clinton Charles. If it really becomes a disaster, we have Levi Jackson. He would be on the chopping block if it came down to it. We don't need him. We got Cam Miller. I, I almost forgot we got him. He is a higher overall player, but 83 speed he's got the break tackle he's got the juke moves good ball carry vision so everything on paper looks good it looks like he can catch the ball in the backfield effectively he's definitely a, a better on paper than in game but we'll see we've never seen him play wide receiver room is getting kind of thin but that's all right we were kind of stacked up last year we know the talent is here awusu ryan brown jr cotton josh merrill all these guys can play love starting with the athletes getting them sorted into the positions that we want them to a lot of exciting ones this year so we got this juco transfer Chris Graham, 98 speed, 93 acceleration, 89 spec catch as well. It's safe to say he should be a receiver. With that kind of speed, you could probably plug him in as a corner as well. We know we need help pretty badly, but we did recruit some corners, so I don't think we have to jump to that. 82 overall wide receiver out the gate. That is huge. And at corner, he's 74. At safety, he is 78 at free safety. But I'm not going to put him over there. I'm okay with my defense kind of being cheeks because I know I can optimize on offense. And then Brandon Ford, we were recruited him to be that running back 79 overall straight out the gate as well he's a freshman by the way true freshman 89 speed 92 acceleration 91 agility 91 jumping but what i really love is he's got the trucking he's got the brake tackle ball carrier vision is solid carrying is solid if we can really develop him he could be in the nfl and we just haven't been able to get the run game going i tried to sell it on terrell hughes it hasn't worked so far maybe it's the offensive line maybe it's the play calling we don't know yet but brandon ford i really believe it so mark cunt has that play rec 88 got to put him on the defense probably for that alone i think i can put him out oh wait Wait a minute, he's got blocking ability. What's his uh, acceleration? 85, the agility 75. So if he can play on the offensive line with 76 speed, 75 agility, that is freaky athletic for an offensive lineman. And I think we need guard help. So I wanna see that, like an athletic guard would be awesome. Dan Sims, we just recruited him. He has that 90 acceleration, so probably don't wanna compete there. We love our athletic offensive lineman here. Let's see, what's his blocking attributes though? Okay, so his pass blocking 80, run blocking, 81 impact 85 he's going to be an offensive lineman i'm sorry we need that there 85 stamina as well that is a steal for an athlete i love finding a gym like that especially because you don't know if these guys can block when you first scout them it doesn't show it i mean it never hurts to add another offensive lineman right for the defense we got a ton of new faces and we definitely needed them because our defense was really bad we got john booker defensive end strong balance across the board i like it and on the right end we got two guys a freshman so a developmental player maybe we'll red shirt him and then we got travis nicholson he'll be ready to play right away a new defensive tackle john wise nearly 300 pounds out of tuskegee alabama 85 strength love power move guys of course doug mayfield will be the starter though because he's going to get a big boost here in training linebackers we got some more depth william newton will be the leader of course on the defense hopefully he has a big jump this year expected more out of him last year middle linebacker is still a disaster we got ourselves a new punter dave dunlap 94 kick power so extending that range for our team and here we go to everyone else's favorite stage training results see how everybody performed in the off season who was doing work who was slacking off let's find out wow i can already see some downgrades and ones i don't want to see let's go position by position jeff eaton downgrading you know in my head canon this is because he got injured so many times last year down to 76 overall losing some speed acceleration agility some awareness once you start getting injured it can be a snowball effect for him terrell hughes stays exactly the same like did anything change with him that's tough for him because i have real no reason to start him joe van hall plus three overall you love to see that oh no jr cotton is dropping down i wonder if that's because he was buried on the depth chart and didn't get a lot of playing time he was talented when he came here losing some speed awareness oh man break tackle minus nine elusiveness minus nine looking at this recruiting any position is open because you never know who's going to downgrade these days merrill brown and awusu all upgrading 
fighting though. Ryan Brown gets an extra speed. Love the dynamic stuff though. It's it's interesting to see some players like not reach their potential. And at least in my head canon, I can try and explain it, especially with Jeff Eaton. And I know Owusu is a warrior. This man always grinds. We could almost put him back at running back. Trucking, break tackle, get him in some wildcat if he wasn't so slow. He's only a junior and this man has 99 catching, 84 spec catch, 89 catch in traffic. If only this man could learn how to run routes effectively, which actually in the game, I feel like I don't have a problem with the way he runs routes. He, it seems to work out just fine for him. And the jumping is maxed out as well. Nobody is a better jump ball receiver than Samuel Wusu. Lonnie Clayton with a plus four. One of my favorite players from last year. Plus one speed to awareness. Really awesome to see route running, jumping. Now he's going to be a lethal threat again this year. It does stink to see other tight ends. Like we moved Kaushik the tight end just to try and get him some more playing time. Jesse Gaines goes down in, in overall, probably because of the lack of playing time last year. And he's the next in line. So we better hope we, he starts to develop. Otherwise, we're going to have to hit the recruiting trail again for some tight ends. Eric Adams with a plus four. Plus three strikes strength acceleration is up to 92 81 awareness and the blocking is still booty cheeks but the impact is going up luther nicholson minus two man very disappointing what happened here just giving up a lot of sacks or something last year i'm gonna recruit some centers darrell owen though he's always on the upward trajectory 73 overall 87 strength 99 acceleration and he's becoming a better run blocker so he's a very fun like swing tackle i really want to almost try him out at a tight end spot and just let him like blow somebody up with a hit stick or something. Doug Mayfield and AJ Ford stay the exact same. Man, how are these guys going to get to the NFL if they never upgrade? Payne. William Newton stays the exact same. You know, staying the same is almost as bad as downgrading because you don't get better. We need our players to develop. Carlos Willis and Dixon Butts with the plus fours. That's what I want to see from my team. Ooh, Carlos Willis with the 88 pursuit plus 10. We even recruited some more talented corners, but if you keep doing that, definitely going to be on the field a little bit. Team Dinson improving he downgraded when he transferred but he put in the work this offseason he should be a fun free safety this year we'll see how he plays oh man jason hudgens minus 11 awareness he heard the footsteps behind him the young guy is now a higher rated overall than him so i guess that shows that's a position battle that was won by stephen parker the younger player jacob harrison our kicker minus three is this because he missed that kick to end the the bowl game last year we ended up winning that game if you remember man minus one kick power minus five accuracy you hate to see it so his range is getting shorter so i'm updating some of the conference stuff i'm already going to go ahead and put texas and oklahoma in the sec this move is i believe going to be happening in 2025 in real life so let's go ahead and make it happen here and also for the sun belt i want a legit conference championship so we need to find ourselves a suitor to fit in here we're gonna poach uab from the conference usa another alabama team on the schedule oh it looks like our offensive coordinator is not as bad as i expected he still has some nice Nice upgrades it's just his prestige is super low our defensive coordinator is the one who stinks and i wish i had the ability to fire him but i can't now comes the time to set the depth chart and with jeff eaton downgrading this offseason it makes this quarterback battle a little more interesting he will be the starter at the start of the season and he does have that athletic ability that no other quarterback on our roster can provide so that always will give him an edge in my eyes Wayne Fontino is always sneaky right there. He's an undersized guy, but he has that arm talent. So we'll see if we ever even need to put him out there. Jeff Eaton is made of glass. So we already know this is probably likely we're going to see Wayne Fontino at some point this year. Brandon Ford absolutely getting the start at running back this year. Way too talented to have anybody else there. So I'm actually going to give Awusu the number one overall receiver this year. He's the only one who continually, constantly works on his game and gets better. 99 catching, 99 jumping. He is is the outside X guy we need. And then as a guy who just kind of runs, goes all the time, we're going to have Chris Graham. And actually, he has sneaky route running too. Pretty good hands, especially compared to the rest of the guys on our roster. So he's going to be my number two. And he's got that spec catch as well. I think he could be a good player this year. Josh Merrill was excellent last year. He got himself as the, a freshman All-American. So that's why I'm going to have him as my number three right now, even though Ryan Brown on paper is technically more talented. We'll see what happens throughout the year. I mean, that third spot, it's kind of open for the taking. J. 
Jair Cotton definitely lost his chance at that though. These guys are far from complete players. Need to show me something this year. Lonnie Clayton, of course, he's an All-American. He's going to be tied in one. Jesse Gaines going to be number two. Oh, this is going to be fun. Darrell Owen, tied in three. 99 acceleration. I got to see it. So here's what our schedule looks like this year. Of course, we got Alabama early on in the season, but we're going to start off with FCS Southeast. That way we knock out both of those rivalry games right from the rip. I really would prefer to play Alabama near the end of the year because, you know, I really want to see what our team looks like before we go into Bryant Denny and have that shootout. I mean, we got pretty close to beating them last year. Hopefully we have a little bit more of a complete team. We just have probably a bad defense again. So expect a lot of high scoring games again this season. And then in week four, we got TCU on the schedule for our neutral site game. We're going to be playing at Energy Stadium, which I believe is in Houston. Then we start conference play and we will play Anthony Burks in Texas State in week seven. That'll be a fun one. We get him at home actually. So it's a homecoming for him. Really intrigued to see how he performs over there. And now because we had the 12th team into the Sun Belt, there will be a conference championship this year. So we're going to be competing for that. So for position needs, we need uh, uh, basically the whole team still. Like these off seasons where we're not developing is setting us back in the future. So this is different from other series I've done. Usually we just kind of keep stacking talent on top of each other. But now I have guys that are kind of stagnant and guys that I hoped would develop aren't even remotely close to their potential. So that kind of opens the door for me in recruiting. I think it's time to take away recruiting restrictions simply because, well, one, I don't want this series to take a decade in game at least. And I think it'll be more fun. We can target anyone now. Sure, it might not be super realistic or whatever, but if you've played this game realistically, like if you were true to life, how long it would take a team to get to like a true like elite program in college football like switching conferences and all that you're looking at multiple decades it's not an overnight process but here in this video game i'll control what i can control and that starts with recruiting so we're gonna just load up on the most talented guys we can guys that are ready to play right now no developmental projects because who knows if it'll pan out what a name this guy has jay sledge he only has one letter for his first name we'll go in depth on all the recruits in future episodes of course but get excited for this year because we're knocking down the wall of restrictions. We're just going to ramp it up and try to get the best players we can. Anyways, I'm excited for season three. This should be the year we take the next step. Hopefully we can win the conference championship this year. Got high hopes. Maybe upset some teams. We'll see. But anyways, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. You're all legends in my book. And as for me, I'm Drew Morris, big old Drewski, not the expert. And I'll see all you guys in my next video. Peace. Thank you to Patreon supporters, Tristan Stagner, Christian Tag, Anthony Uhas, Tyler McGlynn, Zach Harper, Jacob Jordan, Timbo Slice, Richard Pizer, Jason Huerta, Tyler Cracker, Wyatt, Matt Woodruff, Jack Webb, Casey Knox, Austin Gazzetti, Seth Washburn, and Rosalie Jarecki.